Hey everyone, I'm Nathan Miola, The Belief Beast, and you're watching the Online Prosperity Show. Um, you got to tune in because we're talking about big things, we're talking about limiting beliefs and fears and how to overcome uh, the things that are holding you back in life so that you can accomplish anything you want in your career and your business and your health. Uh, tune in, catch it, it's going to be awesome. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the belief beast himself. Nathan, my man, how are you doing? Good, brother. Good, good. Thank you so much for having me. Good to be here. Fantastic. Now, viewers, um, if you're watching this show, obviously you would be aware that our mission is to help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But a lot of the times we cripple ourselves just because of the limiting beliefs that we have either imposed on ourselves or society has uh, imposed on us. Now, limiting beliefs are stories that you probably tell yourself and you self sabotage without even realizing that you're, you know, stopping yourself dead in the tracks. Maybe you might be um, afraid of trusting people or maybe you are afraid people won't like you, or you're afraid that you actually won't accomplish certain things that you know were meant for you, for you to be, do, and have either a life or a business that's full of purpose and that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, besides these beliefs holding us back, you know they often you know tempt us to procrastinate and actually um, you know not do well within ourselves. Therefore, we now start living unfulfilled lives. Now, Nathan, the belief beast is going to knock a bit of sense into you today. So you have to start accepting reality as it is. And you start seeing things the way they actually should be. Now, Nathan, tell me a little bit about your story and how you became the belief beast. Oh man. Well, uh, 12 years ago, I woke up one day, I was 18 years old and I looked down and I was 250 kilos. And I looked around at the world that I had created for myself and, and, and where I was living and what I was doing. And I couldn't, I couldn't imagine a future. I had no vision for my future. I could barely bend over to tie my shoelaces. Um, I was in incredible pain. Uh, my thought processes and, and, and mindset were, were, were full of hate and, and, and full of anger and uh, full of frustration. And I saw what, what was happening to my family around me. And at that moment, I realized that I was the cause, that, that I was the one. And, you know, that's a huge moment because before that, I'd gone through my life believing that everything had been happening to me, you know, that life had been happening to me and, and, and I was just responding. But all of these negative things were happening and I had no ability to change it. The moment when I realized that I was the one that was in charge, that I was the one that was creating everything that I had, all the good and all the bad, that was the moment that I became empowered, empowered and, 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 and took responsibility uh, both for causing the situation that I got into and being able to get out of it. And that's the first moment. That's the, that's the first moment for, for anyone who is, is struggling, that responsibility, that acceptance at the very beginning to stop digging and look up and, and see where you're at and where to go. So after that, uh, the, the, the first thing I did in 2005 was have weight loss surgery. I had lap band surgery and I lost a whole bunch of weight really quickly. Six months, I lost maybe 50 or 60 kilos. I thought, this is amazing. This is the best thing ever. I don't have to change anything that I'm eating. I'm just losing weight. And of course I was losing weight, but the problems came when I got to the point where none of my mentality, none of my, my beliefs, none of my, um, uh, identity had changed at all. And I was left in this internal conflict where, where the only thing I knew how to do to deal with the emotions that I had was to eat. And I couldn't do that anymore because I was restricted physically by this surgery. So it, in, it created this internal conflict and pain. Um, and I used to eat 
until I threw up with this, with this surgery. And I ate so much that I stretched out my stomach and, um, and I, and I caused the, the entire surgery to, to basically fail. Um, and at that point I stopped, stopped losing weight for the next five or six years and just went back into the same cycles and, uh, and then hit absolute rock bottom when I realized that even surgery couldn't help me lose weight. And then it was, uh, and then in 2010, that was the, the next realization that if I kept going this way, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a future. I'm just going to go and destroy everything, everything in this life, all the potential that I have. Uh, and that's when the real work started. That's, that's when the belief beast started to be created 2010. That was when the hard work began. That was when, the training and the exercise and the challenges and the and 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 the the choosing the, the the foods that I was eating and taking back control of my life and it has been a wild ride for the last seven years, man. I can see the smile on your face and 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 the glory in your eye that you are happy with the person you've become, which brings me back to what you just said right at the start that. Um, you know, you were the cause of what was happening and you literally did not align with the person you had become because that happened in a short space of time. Um, you, you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's a need for you to accept that we are so much in charge of what happens around us. Talk uh, me through that process of you trying to align with the person that you had become, even though you know, the outside or the surgery had been performed. What, why, why, why was your body and your mind not in alignment? Look, the, the, that process took a long time. It, you know, even after losing a whole bunch of, even after I'd lost all of the 128 kilos, I was, um, my identity was, was, was still caught back in, in, you know, the comfort zone of where I'd lived for most of my life, because that's how I knew how to relate to people. You see, you know, as a big guy, you know, I had to, I did everything that I could just to be liked, just to have people uh, love me so that they wouldn't leave. So I, you know, I, I, I created a persona and, and a personality and I would tell people what I believe they wanted me to, to, to say, and I would never cause conflict, uh, uh, be really careful not to upset anybody doing all these things that were just the creation of, of uh, you know, myself all based on the fear that people wouldn't love me. And that continued and that didn't stop. That didn't stop after the weight loss, but it was a terrifying moment when I realized that I had lost all this weight. I was training like a beast. I had all these muscles that, you know, I, I was you know, the peak of my physical fitness and the reason I'd done all that was just to prove my worth in this world, just to continue to try and prove that I was worthy of people's love. And it was a moment, an absolute crashing down, uh, a, a moment of realization that you know, everything I've done has been to get validation from, from the outside. So, you know, a lot of people who lose a lot of weight through surgery, especially these days have this, this moment of identity crisis where they, they don't know who they are. They don't know how to relate in this world anymore. And the identity is, is has not shifted now. Right. You, you keep talking about identity. So would it be safe to say you actually have to become the person that you are meant to, to, to be and just walk us through, um, you know, that explanation right there. If you, if you may, sir. Yeah. Yeah. You have to create it. This, this person that you see sitting here, I, I created, you know, um, the, the, the thing is we always create, the identity. We always create the person we are. Sometimes we feel like we don't have that choice, but everything that happens to us, our beliefs, the rules we follow, uh, our perspectives, our culture, you know, religion, everything creates this personality that we have. And that personality is going in a direction a lot of the time with decisions based on fear, you know, fear of not being loved, fear of not being enough, fear that, uh, that I won't be liked. And all these decisions take us in a direction 
that isn't necessarily the direction that we want for our life or fulfilling our full potential. So at some point you need to stop. And that's what I did. I stopped and said, who is the man that I want to be? Uh, what are the things that I want to do in this life? Um, what values do I want? What, what type of life do I, do I want to live? And I sat down and started to create that life. And the process of coming from where I was, you know, as a 250 kilo uh, boy to the man that I am now, um, really was a shifting of identity, a changing and clearing out of all the old beliefs, questioning all the rules, you know, questioning every rule that you've ever followed and breaking it all down and starting to choose life for yourself to choose your belief and choose your rules and choose your values and choose the person that you have to become in order to get to where you want to go. And that, that was the process. It, it wasn't about, you know, changing the diet and exercising. That was part of it. But, but the, the, the real stuff was remembering who I was deep on the inside and, and, and finding that and then creating the man that, that I am now. Understandable. So you went on and um, you started kicking people up until you won a gold medal in jiu-jitsu <laughs> and some other <laughs> dangerous things you went on and did, uh, climbed up the mountain in Brazil. You know, w w what then changed? How did you then accept, um, you know, because there was then that transformation. First of all, you did not acknowledge and you almost, you know, put yourself in, 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 in at risk by, you know, reversing the the surgery and then you then had a mind shift then you went on to do um, all these activities that you you're so proud to do what 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 changed that it's it was it was the shift to avoiding challenges and avoiding risk and avoiding uncertainty to embracing challenge looking for challenge seeking challenge and understanding that challenges are going to be thrown your way whether you like it or not so i thought why not choose my own challenges why not face the fears that I, that i choose to face and um that has really forged the the, the character of, of who i am now challenge after challenge after challenge both physical mental spiritual and emotional challenges you know we we get thrust into these situations that, that we have to deal with, that we feel we're ill-equipped to handle. Uh, and it causes sometimes incredible pain as we try and fight uh, against um, negative emotions or, or, you know, the place we are in this world. But once you start to understand that every challenge, every challenge has been presented to you so that you can grow, then, you know, I, I, I simply became obsessed with growth obsessed with challenge and risk and that's what all those were about you know what can i challenge myself to next what are the things that i've always wanted to do but i've never been able to do what life do i want to create but i've been held back from fear and just go for it and go for it and go for it understandable as humans we are creatures of habit and that's the reason why these limiting beliefs are very prevalent either in our culture in our society that's why we even have words for certain things because they are already feared by um those that came um you know before us now how does fear play into all of you know all of these that you were going through and also the people that you're helping as a constitution um you know for for for, for limiting beliefs fear dictates all the decisions we make in this life you know for a lot of people all the decisions are based on fear and fear is a, a very funny thing because when i say all the decisions we make are based on fear we're either making a decision um, to do something out of fear or a decision to not do something to avoid something happening, which are both coming from fear. Um, I lived my entire life in fear, you know, uh, you know, all the way from the beginning as a child saying, saying no, 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 no to, to opportunities and, you know, going to school dances and, 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 you know, having fun with people, going out with friends all from the minor things, all the way up to opportunities with, you know, relationships or, or business opportunities. 
um, I was constantly being held back by fear, even the fear of being myself. Um, and sometimes what I've found with, with clients that, that, that come to me, the fear itself holds them back from even taking the very first step into accepting that there's a possibility for change. So what I mean by that is the, the, the fear sometimes gets in the way at the very beginning so that a person can't even take a step. For example, we talk about, I talk about diets a lot. I don't believe in diets. I, 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 don't, I don't use diets. Um, I think diets have been the, the, the cause of a lot of, of overweight and obesity in this world. Um, and for most people, every diet that they've ever been on has resulted in the same thing. And it's resulted in a bunch of weight loss and then a lot of weight gain. So every time that they go into a new diet, the, the reason they do it comes from fear. I don't want to get any fatter. I don't want to um, live this life anymore. Uh, so I'm going to eat this way and exercise this way. Everything they do is based on fear. But deep down, they know what the result's going to be because they've experienced it hundreds of times before. They know they're going to get on the diet. They know they're going to lose a certain amount of weight. And they know at about the three-month mark, something's going to happen. It's going to trigger an emotion. And it's all going to crumble. And they're going to put even more weight on. So they know that deep down before they even start the next diet. So have you ever sat down for a test expecting to fail and knowing that you were going to fail? <laughs> doesn't end well. It's not. No. Great so, stuff. Unless you could break through the fear and change the belief around the, the, the reason why you're doing it and, and, and create a, a vision that you truly believe in, then, then you are going to get the same results over and over and over again. And, that's, and I was just talking about weight loss and health, but it's the same for your business and the same for your career and the same for your finances. It's a projection of, of what you believe deep down and, and, and why you're doing what you're doing. What, what fears are, are you succumbing to and allowing to control you? Yeah. Understandable. Well, obviously the people that come around and work, want to work with you, um, they're working with you because you are the belief beast for them. Now, what sort of, um, process do you take your clients through when they, you know, knock on your door and, you know, really want to work with you? First of all, walk with us through to the, to the beginning. What kind of people are you um, you know, looking to, to help or assist in, on their journey so they can also um, go over their, um, you know, limiting beliefs. Yeah, so that, that's, ex you've actually just described it. The people that come to me are the people who are ready to change. They're the people who are sick to death of where they are and are ready to do whatever it takes to get to where they want to be. Um, they're sick of the excuses. They want to clear out all the, all the things that are holding them back and they're ready to create a compelling future for themselves uh, so they can move forward. And that's my job as a coach. I've moved people forward no matter what. So where we start, we normally start by where are you now? Where are you now? And what do you have to accept to take responsibility for everything that you've got in your life? And this is accountability. This is, uh, this is at the, the, the very first step. Unless I can get a person to say, or unless a person can say to me, I am the cause of everything that has ever happened to me in my life and the situation that I'm in, then we don't even work together because that's, that's number one. That's step number one. So always get a person to the point of saying, everything I have, I created. Now what? Because that's empowering. And once you do that, then it's a process of creating a vision for the future, a strong vision that pulls a person forward rather than operating from fear, which oftentimes is a person um, moving forward while looking backwards. So walking through life backwards with a picture of their past spread out in front of them, which is just continuing to create more of the same. So we shift that into a vision for the future so they have a compelling future. Um, then we look at all the, all of the negative emotions that a person experiences on a daily basis, because negative emotions will completely destroy not only your health, 
but any chances you have of creating that vision, as soon as we experience negative emotions like ag- anger, sadness, fear, um, hurt, guilt, um, it pretty much shuts everything down and can stop you in your tracks no matter how big your vision is. So we've got to clear all that stuff out. Uh, and we've got processes to do that. And then we clear out all the limiting decisions, all the limiting decisions about finances, about money, about things you learned when you were a child, or the rules you've been, you know, you've been following, and about health and about diets and, and all of that stuff. Clear all that stuff out and, and, and look at the values. Rearrange the values so that the values are, are all aligned. And just that in itself, to align everything, so you know why you're doing what you're doing. You know how you're going to do what you're doing. You have a plan. You have a goal. You have a, a vision for the future that compels you and pulls you forward. It creates that identity. It creates the person who you need to be to step into that and to move forward to accomplish that. And you become obsessed with the goal. This is the belief. This is how you turn yourself into a belief beast yourself by removing all the old beliefs and installing the new ones that are going to drive you forward. And that's essentially it, man. A a person can accomplish amazing, amazing, unbelievable things in their life if they just do those things. Great stuff. Now, obviously, somebody is probably watching this show um, in the audience and they're dying to, you know, get a hold of you or learn a little bit more, you know, from you and especially your challenges um, that you have um, you know, um, encountered there. How can people get, um, get, get a hold of you there, Nathan? Uh, a, a lot of pretty much all the stuff I post is on Facebook. So go out, go to Facebook, Nathan Miola, send me a friend request, send me a message. Let me know. I've also got a page there, Nathan Miola transformation coaching. Um, and also a website, uh, in the process, which is www.nathanmiola.com.au. And that should be up uh, within the next couple of weeks. Uh, but really, anywhere you can get a hold of me, uh, Facebook, Instagram, it's Nathan Miola everywhere. So come say hello. I'm looking forward to speaking to you. Great stuff. I will be putting in all the, those details, um, you know, in the show notes so that people can just link through and um, get a hold of you there. Now, obviously, uh, if you're watching this show right now, you would appreciate that we are always bringing in experts like Nathan that have been through maybe what you're going through right now and have, you know, the experience and the capability of actually helping you. Right now, you might have great intentions, but you don't know how to follow them through. You might be telling yourself you want to change, but you're really afraid to take action and you might be passionate about life, um, you know, but you're always meeting up, you know, roadblocks on every turn. At the heart of all of these things is exactly what Nathan went through. You are going through what is called limiting beliefs. You might not realize because that's exactly what your environment looks like, feels like, and is supposed to be. But there's more that is you're capable of and there's more um, out there for you to go out there and, and grab. So... If you've enjoyed this show, uh, be sure to follow Nathan and you will be uh, on his journey. He's just recently um, you know, done a great um, you know, um, certification that will help you um, really focus on where you want to be and you know, take you from um, the next steps on, on, on how to be, do and have um, a business that's profitable and enjoyable or a happier existence. Now, Nathan, yeah. thank you so much for your time, your expertise, and your story um, on this online prosperity show today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if I could say one more thing, it's that one thing that I left out was the importance of having people around you to support you. So, you know, when I first started on the weight loss journey, I found people who had done the same thing that I wanted to do, and I got around them. And I didn't stop. And I, and I built, built the, the people around me to support me. People are out there waiting, willing, and able to help you get whatever you want. You have to open up to that. You cannot do this on your own. You know, all the work you will have to do yourself. But there are people out there, mentors, coaches, you know, whether it's for your business or your finances or health or relationships, go to the people who have what you want and talk to them and get around them and, and, and start opening up to that world. 
And the more you do that, the more you put yourself around around those people and kind of start moving away from the environment that created what you have, that's how change starts to happen. That's exactly what, what, what I did as well. So find a coach, go to a seminar, read a book, uh, watch a podcast, you know, keep watching, subscribing to, to people like, uh, like this awesome guy, Prosper, you know, get around as much as you can to fill yourself with, with the, whatever you want to call it, inspiration or heart or presence of the people who are doing the things that you want to do. Uh, understandable. Thank you. I think it was Einstein that said you can't keep doing the same things and expect different results or the same thinking that got you in the same predicament is not the same thinking that will get you out. So like you say, you know, exactly. be around positivity, be around people that are already aiming high, find out how they did it. And then you just shortcut your own learning curve. Thank you so much again, Nathan, um, you know, for, for such prof profound insights. Um, and, and, you know, all the best with your journey and those that you're going to be helping in the process. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Good stuff. Thank you so much. Okay.